Ken, and that brought us closer. He pushed Kauai, instilled good work ethic, and you know, as an avenue to, you know, be better in life. On uh, January 18th, 2008, Mark Leonard was working at his car wash uh, that day. And in the afternoon, uh, some people came over. He got into a dispute with these people. We were on our way from a game. He answered the phone. He hang it up. He said, Mom, they said my dad is dead. I was like, what? He said, my dad is dead. And I said, what do you mean, what happened? One person walked up to him and fired several rounds at him. He was struck uh, at least 10 times. Is he really gone or uh, like, is, he, is there a chance he could still be alive or is this the wrong person? Just, I just had talked to him that day, so um, it was pretty hard for me. Well, I just felt for my son, you know, a deep pain for him because I know he loved him. We try and tell him we're gonna get them. And that's probably the most difficult part of this job is telling the family that uh, right now there's not a whole lot we can do without the cooperation of the witnesses. I just moved past it and um, I'm not worried about the person who killed him. But um, uh, hopefully he does get found, but um, it's not on my mind. I believe if you're like Kawhi and you have a love affair with this game, that the tragedy of what happened with his dad, you're, that will not impede you from doing what you love to do. I think he was more driven uh, and, and has become more driven to not succeed, but to, to make his dad uh, proud. I think that's always, it's always in the back of his mind. You know, I still think about him every day because he still could be here, but I want him just to be like amazed at what's going on and how like I just um, grow as a man to be better in life. He told uh, one of his travel coach a couple years ago, well, I wish my dad was here so he could be proud of me. And I said, and he told me and I said, why your dad is proud of you? He is proud of you. He's looking down and he's very proud of you. And so much to be proud of. This all happened as he was getting ready to go to college and shining as a high school athlete and getting ready to make a big decision in his life and then the worst thing that could ever happen to you. And here he is leading the Aztecs to their most wins ever in a season. Yeah, able to move on. It's a very impressive, sobering story right there. I got a chance to meet Kawhi a little bit earlier on in the year. And what I love about him is not only is he a good person, something that I'm sure his dad would be very proud of, but he's a heck of a ball player as well. You talk about physical specimen. He's got long arms. He's got really big hands. He's got a versatile game to him as well. And I think it's something that we're not, we're not seeing the end of him. His career is going to go on for a long, long time, and we'll see him playing at the next level. Just getting going. Yeah, stories like this really humble us, I think. I mean, you know, you look at what he's gone through, you know, the last couple of years and for, for his level of play just to be where it is is just astounding. I mean, this piece is, you know, really stri you know, strikes your heart. I mean, you know, I know, you know, being as close as I am to my dad and I'm sure you guys to your family, yeah. could you even imagine, I no, mean, no. what that would be like? I no. mean, it's just... I, I, I can't express how much now I'm rooting for him. I wish sure, him yeah. all for the best. Sure. And, you know, uh, it's just a really tough story. A lot of people w would shut down mm -hmm. in that situation, and he's trying to do his dad proud upstairs. And he's one of the best players in the country. And when you talk about the best forwards in college basketball right now, start with Derek Williams at Arizona, Duke's Kyle Singler, and then Kawhi Leonard. It's interesting, you always try and pinpoint who a player reminds you of. The more and more I watch Kawhi, he's not quite as broad-shouldered, but he reminds me of Billy Owens, who played for Syracuse in the early 1990s. Not as broad-shouldered, handles the basketball a little bit better, but has an interesting type of game because he can get double-digit rebounds but still facilitate with the basketball in his hands. He's got 36 double-doubles, too, and yeah. that's in less than two years, knowing that he's a sophomore. The leader at SDSU, San Diego State University, is Michael Cage. We know him from the pros. Yeah. He's at 51. 
So he's at 36 already. He's going to surpass him with time to spare. Yeah, do it as a junior, uh, assuming assuming he's there. We'll, we'll see him on Saturday, though. A reminder that uh, CBS Sports bringing you a triple header this Saturday at noon Eastern. It's a Big East battle between the Syracuse Orange and the Georgetown Hoyas arch rivals. <laughs> There's Jimmy B. <laughs> then at two, it's BYU and Jimmer Fredette against Kawhi Leonard in San Diego State for first place in the Mountain West. One of the greatest players who has ever suited up for the Aztecs is Kawhi Leonard. He's become a household name among the NBA's elite as an NBA champion, a finals MVP, and an all-star starter. But he started out less than 90 miles up the coast from San Diego State, where assistant coaches Justin Hudson and Brian Dutcher witnessed his potential at King High in Riverside, California. When Justin Hudson sent me to see Kawhi for the first time, I came away from the workout, and, and honestly, I thought he had a chance to be an NBA player. You know, I you know, was in Riverside King, which is only about an hour and 15 minutes, up to 15, and saw him in AAU basketball, continued to watch him, built a relationship. It was not easy to do. If you know Kawhi, he's not going to pick up the phone. He's a man of few words. If you also know Kawhi, you know he's a thinker. You know he's loyal. You know he's a hard worker. There's not too many times nowadays with social media and all the AAU circuit that you can outwork people because everybody knows everybody. You know, but we were able to outwork people with Kawhi because he wouldn't answer his phone. He didn't want to talk to people, so you had to kind of force yourself on him. And once you did that, I think he, he also thought and saw he had an opportunity here. I think he believed in the staff. When we got him, obviously, he was like all good young players. He had a lot of work to do on his game. And that's the best thing about Kawhi. He puts his work in. Kawhi was about winning and getting better. He has a plan every single day what he wants to do, how he's going to do it, and what he expects to get out of it. And I think for Kawhi, he, he does embody what San Diego State basketball program is about, having a chip on your shoulder, working hard every day, and listening, and then going out and performing at a high level every single night. There's a reason his team went, that he was on went 34-3. and three. They didn't take off at practice. And what a great example for our kids. He comes back every summer. He's in the Jam Center, and he's spending an hour and a half, two hours in there putting hard work in, not just in there casually shooting. He's working at every aspect of his game. That guy is the, you know, he's the model here. You know, he's the reason I came to San Diego State, and that was before he won the NBA Finals MVP. He still comes around. Before season started, he was still up here and working out all the time. He always gives us the input, and, and he always tries to hang out with us as much as he can when he comes back. So he's a great role model, and everybody looks up to him. He just showed us, like, you know, you know, if you want to drive by somebody, you know, to go shoulder to the hip, like, you know, you got to drive, you know, get that, um, attack that hip, you know, they're going to they're gonna open up, and you're going to be able to go right by them and stuff. So I thought I didn't even know that, and I learned that from him. So he gave us those little, little key pointers that helped us. Yeah, of course, I mean, I tried to guard him a few times enough it worked out, but I did, I did what I could. <laughs> he's, just, he's real strong, really strong. He rebounds the heck out of the ball. Uh, I try to rebound like that, and uh, he's just so versatile. I mean, he can shoot threes, he can post you up, he can play pick and roll, he can, you know, initiate the break. I mean, this guy is, you know, he does it all. He still has that relationship with the coaches. Like I said, I want it. Like after I'm, after I'm done playing here, he still has a relationship with the coaches. He still is always here working out, and it, it's it's really cool to see. Because I mean, you always keep that connection with the coaches. They're not just like, all right, you're here four years. All right, we're done with you. Like you build that connection. They always care for you. So you, you want to call them two years, three years down the road, even if you're not playing. They're always there to pick up your phone call and talk to you. So. That's one thing that uh, special about this place. He likes it here. He's able to be himself here, you know, with the new practice facility. Thanks to everybody for those donations. It enabled him to come back a little bit more freely. If you have a gym that you can get in, Kawhi's gonna like you. And you know, since he's loyal to us and we're family and we have a gym he can get into now, he really likes us. So we were able to see him a lot more this summer. And that was a pleasure for everybody. And what better example for our kids to go in and say, this is the work that has to be put in if you want to be a great player. And Kawhi truly is a great player. I think he's a guy that, you know, not only San Diego State can be proud of, the whole San Diego's proud of. And he deserves everything he gets because he's an extreme hard worker. He listens. He's, a, he's very intelligent. And, uh, I'm just happy for him.